Is your work computer slow, unresponsive, unreliable, or crashing a lot? This is Teach Your Way Weekly. I'm your host, Steve Smith, aka Z Axis, and yes, me call me that. And today's topic is thanks to David from YouTube, and it has to do with streamlining the performance of your computer. So I have two topics from him for the, this week and next week. Today is about streamlining your work computer. So there's a few things we need to clarify. Everything that has to do with startups, fragmentation, temporaries, viruses, and spyware virtual memory, RAM, and hard drive space. And the most important topic to talk about is this startup. So we're gonna use a little bit of mathematics and you can take out your calculators if you want, but let's talk about those startup applications. And in three simple words, I will say turn them off. No application really needs to start at the beginning of your computer startup, except for your anti-spyware and antivirus solution, including your operating system and maybe some of those networking tasks that you actually need. But besides that, things like your office photography, music, games, downloads, instant messengers do not need to start up at the beginning. And this is how we will calculate this. So let's say you have open office installing your computer and it's using the preload option, the startup option to load faster in your computer, but you use it once a week, but it loads your computer by three seconds every single day. Well, let's say, so three seconds over a week, that's 21 seconds, you use it only one day, so you have 18 invalid seconds that are making you slow down. Well, this is not the only application starting up. What happens if you have Steam and that adds another five seconds? So five over seven is 35 seconds, you use it, twice a week, hmm, 25 another invalid seconds. So you basically almost lost a minute there in one week. So what about all those other applications like your instant messengers and your other graphic software that allows you to connect your camera to download all the pictures? Well, what happens if you connect your camera to your computer once a month and that application slows you down by another six seconds? Well, over that month, you will have accumulated how many? 180 lost seconds? Hmm, on a 30 day a month? Well, ironically, 180 lost seconds is another three minutes of lost time. So do you understand what I mean? Turn those applications off and stop losing time. You will actually spend less time waiting for your computer to start up and you'll actually proceed faster to your tasks. Fragmentation, the repeated use of a computer actually takes its toll on the hard drive. So the repeated use of files, modifying the files, accessing them and saving the new sizes of these files means that they do not necessarily fit exactly where they came from. So parts of these files get scattered over the hard drive. This is fragmentation. And it's not limited to the data files. It also affects system files. Well, rotating hard drives are actually dependent on a spinning hard drive and multiple heads to actually seek for data. The longer it takes to seek the data, the longer it takes to load the file. So in other words, having a defragmented computer with the minimum amount of fragmentation as possible means that you will load faster. Go to tqaweekly.com slash se2 ep43 for any other future program I talk about in this episode. Today, this program I'm gonna suggest right now is called Smart Defrag 2. It is capable of actually running before Windows and allowing you to actually defrag all those system files. You do not need to run that one on startup either, so turn that option off. But make sure you regularly defragment your hard drive. Temporary files. These actually can lead to you running out of space on a hard drive, so you need to make sure you don't have any temporary files in your computer, and these are files created by the installation of software and even by navigating the internet. What happens is you can collect gigs of data. This is gigs of data where that stored in your computer that are not necessarily useful for you. So making sure you use a program like, in this case, Advanced System Care, Glare Utilities, or CCleaner allows you to remove these files from your computer so that you don't have to worry about these files anymore in the future. Making sure that you have as few temporary files in your computer as possible means you will have more hard drive space 
and I'll get to that in a few minutes. Another important detail, the most common reason actually for computers to slow down over time are viruses and spyware. And I know this from fixing a lot of computers. Many people that are not necessarily in the know about computers will buy computers. And when they're brand new, they come with antivirus solutions, which are actually valid for anywhere from 90 days to a year, some two years. Depends on how much you paid and how much money you gave to the store. So if you took your wallet and started throwing cash, you probably got a year or two. Well, unfortunately, they expire. And most people don't know what to do about it. Some will get tricked into paying more money and actually continuing the product, in which case you got tricked, but you're still getting protected. And some other people just don't worry about it and then let the antivirus stay dormant. So here's one of the things. Viruses change all the time. After a while, that antivirus can only protect you from viruses it knows. Well, over a period of years, you have hundreds of thousands of new variants of viruses. So you want to make sure that you have A, an up-to-date antivirus solution, and B, you run it regularly. And this is the same for spyware. You want to make sure you have a up-to-date anti-spyware solution and that you run it regularly. So you have a program from Windows, by the way, called Microsoft Security Essentials. And yes, Microsoft knows Microsoft. And although most programs will not necessarily find every single virus, and this included, this is free. It will update by itself and it will scan by itself. So if you want to avoid spending a cent, when you update your computer, just look inside on their website and get that software. Besides that, use whatever antivirus solution you have right now and make sure it's up to date, including your anti-spyware. But I do have suggestions to make sure that you don't load your whole memory. Avoid Norton 360 and avoid McAfee Total Protection. These bloatware feature rich programs do not serve you anywhere near as well as you would believe. So stay with the common basic antivirus and antispire solutions. That way you won't lose your RAM and your virtual memory to that actual other series sets of products. And these include protecting you from phishing attacks and having a secondary firewall, which will actually cause you more grief than you can believe, especially if you like to do media rich tasks like gaming online and video chats. These will require you punch holes into that firewall anyway. And Windows already comes with a firewall and so is your router a firewall. Now virtual memory versus RAM. So 32-bit computers can't have more than four gigs theoretical of RAM and basically in real life, they don't support more than three to 3.5 gigs of RAM and I know this from experience. These include things like Windows XP, which is more commonly 32-bit. So if you're running a Windows Vista, Windows 7 and Windows 8 and you have 64-bit operating system, I believe 7 and Windows 8 are both 64 anyway and Vista you have a choice. But if you're running 64-bit, you can run lots more than four gigs of RAM. So if your computer has more RAM than four gigs and you have a 64-bit operating system, you're fine. Six, eight, 10, 12 gigs of RAM, your virtual memory is basically not used. So you don't have to worry about this, but what about everybody? Well, you got two settings you can worry about. You can set the managed size to about 1.5 gigabytes of virtual memory for every RAM one gig of RAM, or you can let the system decide. For most of you, just let the system decide. And if you want to make the computer a little bit faster, and you have a second physical hard drive, don't do this on an SSD drive, but do this on a second rotating hard drive. Put the virtual memory on the second hard drive. This will separate out the tasks and the reader heads won't have to work as hard. It makes sure that the hard drives do not crash as fast, and your computer won't have to work as hard to do all the tasks and will also prevent you from fragmenting your primary hard drive. So talking about the hard drive, you need more space than you ever believed. 
Did you know that the operating system is actually incapable of starting up if the hard drive is full? In fact, it can't even perform some of the most basic tasks like defragmentation without having the necessary 15% of the total hard drive space available to it to actually achieve its tasks. The more space, free space, you have on your hard drive, the better your tasks, the faster and the less likely you are to crash. So having enough space in the hard drive for all these tasks to be done, graphics, audio, websites, video, and any other type of tasks do take up space. You want to make sure you have as much space as possible for these tasks. So make sure you dump all the temporary files and caches you don't need. Make sure you don't have anything you don't need in your computer installed. That way you have the maximum amount of free space that you can possibly have and you shouldn't experience any issues with the virtual memory with the hard drive space and all your scratch disks for any of these actual multimedia programs you may use in your day-to-day -day work. So in short, make sure your computer to make sure your computer runs faster and more streamlined, run as few programs on startup as possible, make sure you don't have any viruses or spyware in your computer, make sure you have virtual memory set correctly if possible onto the second drive, remove all the temporary files and internet files from your computer. You don't need them and make sure you defragment your hard drive regularly using a program like Smart Defrag 2. This way, your computer will run faster. So results will vary. This always depends on your computer, but you will get more performance out of your computer nonetheless. Next week, another topic suggested by David from YouTube, will focus on multiple monitor setups. So I'll be talking about two and later on, I'll actually try to get three screens to work at the same time and increase the FPS. But we will be talking about how to get at least a second monitor connected to your computer so you can get a really nice experience out of it. And I'll explain what you need, how to set it up, how to move those screens and windows so that you can actually get the mouse to go in the right direction on the screens. So come back next week to learn how all this works, what you need to get it to work, and all that important information that goes with that. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to TQA Weekly. Head over to our newly rebuilt website at tqaweekly.com for the show notes of this episode. Learn how to subscribe to our newsletter, get our Android application, participate in our contest, weekly surveys, and so much more. Stay safe and online, and have a great day.